Let's do a compound manometer problem. We are given a diagram of a manometer, the pressure of the atmosphere, the height differences, and the specific weights of the three fluids in the manometer. We will be solving for the pressure of the air inside of the tank. Before I begin, I want to stress the importance of making sure that you have converted all of your units to the desired end units of pressure. So in this case, all units are converted to newtons and meters so we can dip to the final pressure in newtons per squared meter, also known as a pascal. So let's first go over the reasoning behind adding or subtracting a pressure in a manometer. If there is more fluid on one side of a manometer tube, that fluid will be exerting a greater force downwards than the opposite side. This either causes a pressure increase or decrease. For a U-bend, if there is more liquid on the end with a given pressure, that liquid must be exerting a force towards the end we are solving for. In this case, we add pressure or the specific weight times height to get the final pressure. If there is more liquid on the end we are solving for, that liquid must be exerting a force towards the given pressure end. We must subtract the pressure to get the final pressure at the end we are solving for. Similarly, for an end bend pipe, if there is more liquid on the end we are solving for, then that liquid must be exerting a force towards that end. The pressure in the solving end increases and we must add the specific weight times height or pressure to get the pressure we are solving for. If there is more liquid on the end we are given the pressure for, the liquid must be exerting a force towards the given end. We subtract the specific weight times height or pressure in this case to get the final pressure at the end we are solving for. So now that we understand how the pressure increase and decrease works in a manometer, let's go back to the problem. To start off, we have atmospheric pressure pushing towards the end we are solving for. We must add this value to get the final pressure. To help as a visual aid, I'll be showing a manometer laid out flat in the direction of the force in both the original diagram and the flat diagram. Next we have the mercury, which has more liquid on the side opposite of which we are solving for. This liquid is exerting a force towards the end we are solving for. We must add the specific weight times height to get the final pressure. After the mercury, we have diesel that has more liquid at the opposite end of the end we are solving for. We can see that the liquid will be exerting a force going towards the open end. We must subtract the specific weight times the height in this case. Now finally, we hit the water. There is more water on the side we are solving for. This means that the water is exerting a force outwards towards the open end. We must subtract the specific weight of the water times the height difference to get the final pressure of the air. So after adding and subtracting all of the pressure values, we get that the air inside the tank has a pressure of 260,565 newtons a meter squared. This problem might not be 100% realistic, but hopefully this video helped explain how manometers work and how to solve a manometer problem. Thanks for watching, hopefully you learned something, and hopefully I earned a like, share, or subscription.